so we are starting a very important topic uh, pd solvers so the three types parabolic elliptic and hyperbolic so this pd classification is critical so parabolic uh, I'll give only examples. I will not do the math part of this. So d by dt, this partial, this partial t is Laplace in psi. Diffusion equation is well, parabolic. Okay. So these are linear equations. We can also make it non-linear, which I will do it later. Uh, elliptic equation is example of elliptic equation. You've done this in your math course. So, example of elliptic equation. Oh, what? No, wave is not elliptic. Wave is hyperbolic. As uh, Laplace's equation. So, this is elliptic, and uh, parabolic is hyperbolic is. Okay. So. We will do only these two classes, not this class. I will do one, well, I mean, I will basically make a slight excursion into it, but uh, I will do these two, not this. Okay, it's more complicated. Okay, so let's look at first this equation, how to solve it in 1D. So dt d psi is alpha d square psi. Okay, you know how to solve this? By what method? Separation of variables. Separation of variable, then what? So separation of variable will not really well first who solve this equation? The first person who solve this equation. was done by Fourier first. He does well, it's not separation of variable, but Fourier 1807. And uh, in fact the Fourier series he, he solved using Fourier series. Okay. Uh, so the idea is to expand. So we'll assume that I'm solving in a 1D grid where psi is 0 at both ends. Okay, let's assume that. So it's very similar to particle in a box or infinite potential. So psi equal to zero. So I can exp if this is the case, then Fourier says this person Fourier. He says that psi x psi x can be expanded in terms of sine functions. Sine k n of x k n. Okay, I can expand in terms of Fourier series. So this is what he told first. Now this is a very important theorem. You can using this function, using this expansion, you can expand any function. In fact, even discontinuous ones. Okay, so you may, if you well, I'm sure this function can also be written in terms of this. So there's a discontinuity at this point and this point. Uh, so Fourier didn't know the proof but he postulated that this can be done and that is the reason why he was struggling I mean nobody believed that time yeah why are there is a discontinuity no here at this point there is a jump in the function the fun yeah the fun there is a this is a discontinuous function the derivative does not exist it has two values at this point okay so, uh, but it's a very important expansion. Now, using this, let's try to uh, solve it. This equation. So, what we do is we'll make so this function of x and t. Now, x part I will. So, one more point. K n is n pi by l. L is the box size. 
okay so this one i'll make a function of time this this coefficient okay so uh, x dependence and t dependence are separated out so in some sense it is like separation of variable but this way i'm going to give the full solution now let's plug it in here so what do i get sum of so time derivative lack only on this so d by dt of k and t so right hand side will be minus alpha so if i take the double derivative what will i get k n squared k n squared psi tilde k n now uh, i forgot uh, i had to put a sign k n x here okay so i can take it to the left hand side and this gives us sum so written by uh, i can write like this right uh, this is a notation psi n means here n x so k n so this this index n actually since we are going to use okay so we have to okay let, 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 let me just put a k here k n okay plus alpha k n square psi head of k n sin now what can i say about this what can i say about this what should be zero because these are independent basis functions so if this to be zero for all x implies that this quantity is zero so hat is the fourier transform okay so i have converted my partial differential equation into ods so they have become ordinary differential equation and how many of them infinite of them so n goes from 1 to infinity for this case so a infinite equation so but i have succeeded in converting to pds uh, pds to ods now in practice we don't need infinite series so how do i cut it off so this is impossible to get infinite series no i mean uh, in practical uh, life so how do i uh, cut this off so there will be highest wave length high, highest wave number here okay at some point it has to cut off Right. there are fluctuations but the fluctuation with highest wave number is up to that point only i need to go so there will be uh, if i look at this time series i will have something like this then like this like this so there is a shortest wave length a shortest wave length corresponds to min k max which is l by k max uh, 2 pi uh, pi by lambda min i need to only sum up to that point i don't need to go beyond it okay and given the time series or uh, somebody gives you the function uh, i have to just do this find the lowest wave length so this is set of n ods and i can now use my techniques to solve these ods it turns out this linear equation it has exact solution this was fourier did fourier was not using a computer so this has a solution what is the solution for this k n is equal to psi n alpha 
alpha k n square t. Now each of them can be has exact solution. So what is my final solution? This t. My so final solution of will be x t. I am not done yet because I need to find out what this is. So, how do I compute this one? How will I compute this? This is t equal to 0. So, this has to be computed from the initial condition. So, I will give you the initial condition psi x equal to 0, psi x at t equal to 0. From this, you compute, do the Fourier transform and that will give you okay so this solved this is how Fourier solved it and uh, it has exact solution but you yeah, I want to do it numerically okay uh, this is looks very simple equation but let's do it numerically and figure out what are the issues for this problem and it will help you also to solve other more complicated problems okay so which method so let's do the blindly uh, simple method which is Euler so first let's do Euler, so Euler method, Euler's explicit. This one. So this will be. So I have n of them. So for each of them, I need to apply Euler. So psi tilde, I'm going to put k. So this that is why I was afraid of this n will conflict with my time stepping n. So there is a uh, sim the symbol. So I am just going to say this is k. For k n I am just specifying by k is a wave number. So n plus 1 equal to psi hat of k n. Now this is the right hand side minus alpha k n squared psi k n. By the way, this is spectral method. Huh? So, some of you have chose spectral method. So, these using Fourier transform. So, you can use this method to solve many differential equations, PDEs. So, this is really the uh, spectral method. Spectral means I am we breaking into different spectrum, uh, that prism spectrum, that's what we do. So I have broken into different spectrum. So these are equations for different wave numbers or different colors of light, if you like. Okay, so we are solving this. So this will be 1 minus, no sorry, I forgot, delta t, no? So this is a function of time. Now, so we have, we have two uh, things. One is in I have discretized in time and I discretized in wave number. So I need to, so I start from t equal to 0, I go to t final, but let us assume that I have done uniform disc discretization in time. So this is delta t. So this must be delta t here, correct? Euler explicit scheme, yes? So this is going to be minus k n square delta t psi hat of k n k. Now yeah. This one? So given the initial condition, so this is my solution. But I need to compute this. Right now, this is my temperature in Fourier space at t equal to zero. And how do I compute it? How do I find it? So, given the initial condition, I can find that, right? So, this is a initial value problem. And solving this, given the initial value. So, initial value, I have to give you what is psi x at t equal to zero. Okay, 
So once I know this, I can do the Fourier transform to get this at t equal to zero. You can do it wrong in the should I write it or so you have to do the inverse transform and that will give you psi k uh, psi of uh, this integral psi x sin something like this okay uh, there will be some factors 2 or something so that is inversion. Okay, now so this is my coming from Euler scheme. Okay, uh, the problem will come. So if alpha positive for diffusion equation, things are fine. This will uh, converge or uh, for alpha positive, this quantity is real. So uh, my uh, psi k, uh, psi n plus one will decrease, like it decreases here. Now there can be a problem if my delta t is too large. So what can happen? If this quantity becomes minus two, uh, minus one, if as soon as this quantity becomes uh, less than zero, then there is a problem. So by I want this function to be positive if this is positive but as soon as this becomes less than 0 then there is an oscillation and the real solution does not have oscillation this is monotonically decreasing. So this creates oscillations and when does the oscillation starts alpha k n squared delta t greater than So, for my well behaved nature, so this is stability, for stability, so that means I do not want this oscillation, this very similar to oscillations we were getting for unstable solution. It is supposed to monotonically go down to 0, but it is oscillating now. So for stability I require that this condition should not, should not happen. So I require that alpha k squared delta t must be less than 1. So delta t must be less than 1 by alpha okay this is critical so when you do your project you have to keep this this in mind now what do i what is kn so kn is a set so look for every kn i have a delta t so what is the worst delta t the lowest delta t so right, so every equation has a delta t correspondingly. So lowest delta t will be 1 by alpha k max squared. So what is k max? So that will be 1 by uh, pi by pi squared lambda min. Okay, now so I am going to go now to the finite difference. So, this is so we can also estimate what is lambda min. So, we have we have a grid. So, now in real space, now just so far I was in Fourier space, these quantities are in Fourier space, but you look at the real space data. So this is x. So we got this is delta x. Uh, so this will be h. We call it h. Okay, real space uh, separation is called h. Now what should be? So this is called Nyquist criterion. I will not describe that. So Nyquist criteria. So lambda according that lambda should be so here the wavelength so the lowest wavelength should cover 2h so that's an accurate state area so lambda equal to 2h okay uh, so you are okay so the criteria tells you physically 
that given the time series if I want to resolve it using Fourier transforms or I want to resolve it not necessarily Fourier transform even by finite difference scheme. So, the lowest wavelength should contain two points 2 h. So, suppose there is a signal coming from the radio station I want to filter it I, I want to analyze the time series. So, what should be my spacing of delta x? So, my delta x must be so that is delta x delta must x must be lambda by 2 lambda mean by 2 ok. So, this gives, gives you a relationship between delta mean and an h. So, my delta t if I use this I get so lambda mean will be 4 s squared ok. So, I am just substituting it here. So, my so from this I am getting a clue what should be my delta t for my uh, p uh, for partial differential solver and what should be my delta x. This is very critical for all the projects you have to be very very clear what should be my delta x and what should be my delta t. If you do not choose it the code will blow up it oscillate it will misbehave it do not work. Okay, and this is called CFL criteria. Okay, so I know what should be my delta x and what should be my delta t. Now this is how we solve a diffusion equation in spectral method. 